Hello everyone! In today's tutorial, we will explain how to handle the new mode that VT Pro has launched for viewing 3D models called First Person View. For those who haven't heard about this yet, we've got a blog post all about it. In it, you can find a more detailed explanation, some examples, and this background video where you can see some of the amazing scenes you can create using this new feature. What's great about this is that it lets you see models like you're actually inside them. Imagine being able to move around as if you were walking right there in the model, looking anywhere you want just by moving your head. It's pretty much the closest thing to actually being in a 3D space, kind of like in a video game. It's a great tool for exploring indoor or outdoor spaces. Plus you can add in all the cool extras that VT Pro lets you put into 3D models like animations, hotspots, actions, and anything else you can dream up. To get started with these kinds of tours, the first thing we'll need is a 3D model. Currently, we have a few key ways to create these, using LiDAR scanners, photogrammetry, which is quite popular, or even the most recent NERF system that we'll be discussing in another video. Plus, 3D Vista is planning to introduce its own tool for generating these types of models soon. Alternatively, you can also design your model from scratch using 3D creation software like AutoCAD, Blender, or 3D Studio Max. And, of course, we can always turn to marketplace websites and buy a ready-made model. All right, now that we've got our model, which has to be in GLB or GLTF format for now, let's head over to VT Pro. Click on Add Media, Import our 3D model, and select the First Person View option. Choose our model and open it. In this panel, we are going to find the same adjustment options that we already know from other types of 3D models, which we have already explained in previous tutorials. But where we are going to find differences is going to be here in the camera tab. As you can see, our model is already in first person format. With the A, W, S, D keys, we could already move through it. The thing is though, we're kind of floating above everything. So let's start by getting the view down to a natural height, like you're really there. The Q and E keys let you go up and down. Hold shift at the same time for more precise control, or if you prefer, this button switches between flyover or first person format. With flyover, you might find it easier to sweep around the scene and get to where you need to be. You can switch between them as you like. We suggest looking for a reference point, like a door or a window, to help you judge the right height that a person would have in this model. For example, something like this. Next, find a good starting point for your tour. Here for instance. Once you've found the right spot, click on the setting Set View as Initial Point. Here you can change the FOV if you want to widen or narrow the field of view. Or change the rotation and translation speed if you want the camera to move faster or slower. As you can see, we have different types of navigation, which we talked about in the blog post we mentioned earlier. So let's move on to the rest of the options, but we'll switch models for that. The new options we have specific to this mode are the following three. The first one is collision detection. If we leave this active, you'll find that you can't walk through objects. You'll bump into things and get blocked, just like in real life. You will not be able to walk through walls or objects. But if we turn it off, you can walk right through objects without a problem. Even through walls or glass. Now you can also mix it up a little. Turn on collision detection here, so that in general elements do block you. But then you can go to your list of objects and by unchecking make individual objects non-collidable. Like, for example, I could click here to select the table and turn off the collision detection. Same for this vase. So now I can walk right through them without them blocking my path. But the walls, as you can see, they still block me. This can be really handy for guiding the user and keeping them out of areas you don't want them in. As the next option, we have this double click to move. With this on, you can double click anywhere and the model will zip you right over there. If the distance is further, then the jump will be faster. 
And if you go to a closer place, you will see that the movement is slower. So that's another cool way to get around. If we turn it off, double clicking doesn't do anything. I'll leave it on, but for this video, I'm using the AWSD keys to move around. And finally, as the last specific option of this first person view mode, we have the maintain height option. This option allows you to maintain the height we have defined between the floor and the camera, which would be our eyes. So if, for example, we go up these steps, as you can see, the camera also moves up naturally. Or if we try to climb the stairs, the camera also goes up. On the contrary, if we deactivate it and try to climb these steps, as you can see, although we go up or go through them, the camera does not go up with them. The same happens with the stairs, as you see the camera does not go up. It leaves the height fixed and does not adapt to the terrain we are stepping on. So depending on the requirements of your project, you can leave it active or deactivated. As you can see when activating it, we have a second sub option, which would be the maximum step height. This value defines the height limit at which objects can still be jumped over. So if I put a very low value, for example, the minimum, this little step can't be jumped over, it is too high. So it will block my path. However, if I increase it now, I can go through it. Or if, for example, this table is about a meter high and the value is set at 30 centimeters, I will not be able to jump over it. As you can see, it blocks my path. Another example, if I go to this sofa and set a value of approximately 30 centimeters, as you can see, I can't jump over it. But if I increase it, um, yes, I can climb onto it. I can even walk over its cushions. So with this, you can define with precision which objects we can jump over and which we cannot. So keep this in mind for situations like this, where, for example, you have a staircase and you want to define whether you can go up or not. As you have seen, the new mode is very simple to configure. Only a few settings change, but they give you the possibility to create fully immersive tours, where you can traverse scenarios and spaces in a very natural and free way. The user will have the feeling of really walking through them. So that's all for today. We're eager to see your own creations. Thank you for your attention and greetings.